Hi, this is Dr. Justin here, and today's talk is on thyroid function and thyroid disrupting chemicals that can actually affect your thyroid function. So first off, what is your thyroid gland? Well, that's the gland right in your throat here. This gland produces a hormone called T4. T4 then gets converted into T3, and T3 is our active thyroid hormone. And so when you're getting exposure to these chemicals, a couple things can happen. It can affect your brain, the pituitary gland that signals down to the thyroid to make thyroid hormone, T4. It can actually affect T4 production and just lower T4 altogether. And it can actually affect T4 conversion. So if we don't have good T4 conversion, then the T4 we make can't really get converted into T3, our active thyroid hormone, and this starts to fall as well. The next way is it can actually bind into receptor sites. So here's our T3. It has to now bind into a receptor to have a proteomic response to work properly. So if we have a different chemical in here that's affecting that, then when this comes in like so, it won't be able to bind in. So instead of having an open receptor site, it now will be closed. So let's talk about a couple of these chemicals that can affect this. Well, we have halides. Halides are a group on the periodic table of elements. Some are actually good. We have iodine, which is a really important nutrient for the thyroid. This is good if you are not autoimmune. If you are autoimmune, you want to, be, you want to stay away from iodine because that can actually increase your autoimmunity. So you want to make sure that you are screened properly for that. And the correct test would be a TPO antibody or an antithyroglobulin antibody test. I strongly recommend you see a functional medical doctor that can screen you for this ahead of time. But iodine is a nutrient. It's involved in actually becoming a raw ingredient in thyroid hormone. Um, next are different compounds called bromine or bromides. These are common in different bakery foods or breads. What happened was iodine was actually used as one of these fillers in these breads, and now they replaced it with bromine or bromides, and these can actually fill in and affect the thyroid receptor sites. Uh, along with fluoride, and we're getting constant exposure to fluoride in the drinking water. That's a whole other discussion, but fluoride can affect the thyroid hormone receptor as well. In Germany in the 1940s, fluoride was actually used to treat hyperthyroidism. So hyper meaning an overactive thyroid, they would use fluoride to knock it down. So we know, just based on experience, that this is going to be something that affects your thyroid function. Other things would be like mercury or aluminum. These can also affect thyroid receptor sites. And mercury can be found in abundance of things today as well. Uh, aluminum as well too. And these can affect the thyroid receptor sites. Next would be chemicals such as uh, bisphenol A's or BPA or PCBs. Uh, these are chemicals usually found in plastic containers, also phthalates too. Also in the lining of cans. So for instance, phthalates basically give plastic containers their flexibility so you can scrunch a plastic bottle. So we're still getting exposure to these and these can actually affect thyroid hormone too. Next are a couple different things known as PBDEs. These are common flame retardants. They are essentially used in mattresses or different rugs and such that are used to prevent fire but they also have a detrimental effect on our thyroid hormone function. There's a lot of different compounds that are these flame retardant based things. Next would be exogenous hormones. So one of the biggest things that we see today is lots of women are on birth control pills. And what happens, these birth control pills contain high amounts of estrogen. And these estrogen molecules can actually affect the body's ability to uptake thyroid hormone. So in a thyroid lab, you would see lower amounts of T3 uptake, so the body's ability to utilize this thyroid hormone is diminished. Another common thing would be foods. So if we're eating foods with pesticides, a lot of these pesticides are, are organochlorine-based. And what they're showing is that's actually affecting and lowering T3 levels um, by decreasing T4 to T3 conversion and can also disrupt receptor sites. So staying away from these pesticides, going organic is going to help your thyroid function by decreasing these organochlorines from your diet. And not but not least uh, are compounds such as goitrogens. Goitrogens are found in soy products. So we see lots of people that have gone vegetarian. They're getting a lot of their protein from soy-based sources. And soy is a potent goitrogen. What a goitrogen is, it blocks iodine uptake into the thyroid gland so the body's ability to make thyroid hormone goes down. So soy is a very common one. Just because lots of people who are vegetarian or vegan are going to consume that as their main protein source. 
Next one, it's a little bit controversial, and I don't want you to get the bad idea on this one, but cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli, asparagus, uh, cauliflower, um, all of these are goitrogens as well. They're from the cruciferous family. They have lots of healthy compounds in them, such as sulforaphane, um, diendol methane, indole 3 carbonyl, awesome anti-cancer compounds. The thing is, though, eating these raw excessively can actually decrease thyroid function. So we want to make sure you have these. Just make sure you lightly steam them or cook them first. That can actually deactivate a lot of the goitrogens found in these foods. So I'm not telling you not to eat them, but steaming them or cooking them slightly can help inhibit those nasty compounds. And then you can get the food intake with lots of good nutrition and not have the negative effect with the thyroid. Hope everyone found this information helpful. If there are any questions, feel free and uh, visit justinhealth.com and or call or email the office. Thanks. Have a great day.